Hey guys, it's Peter from The Mentors here, and I'm very happy to welcome you in the very first episode of the new series. All right then, so what this series are going to be about? Well, within those series, what we are going to focus on is actually building an app from the scratch. And the app will be built within the, let's say, distributed microservice architecture. But instead of focusing once again more in depth on the overall architecture layer, domain layer, and so on, which we already did within some of our previous courses, like the latest one from Darek about the CKRS with clean architecture, my previous mini course about the um, modular monolith or one of the, one of the other courses that you can find on our YouTube platform or on our DevMentors.io platform. What we are going to focus on instead is actually the framework, the technology, the cool libraries and the tools that can help you with building some kind of distributed systems, but not only distributed systems. You know, this kind of tools and libraries that you can also use when building your monolithic or modular monolith or any other apps that you can think of. So we'll just try to have some fun when working with our code so that there be there won't be really like too many layers or we are not really going to focus on a domain while in the other additional series that we are going to publish to our YouTube in the future, for example, regarding the DDD, you know, domain driven design and this sort of things, we are of course going to emphasize on a domain layer and a clean architecture as well. But within those areas, we just want to have fun with the technology framework and nice tools around this. And one more important thing is that we'll try to keep this series rather short. I mean, the, the episodes. So instead of, let's say, one or two hours <laughs> time range per episode, uh, what you should expect is something like, let's say, maybe 10 or 20 or, or 30 minutes, hopefully no longer, something that you could watch within the lunch break and just, you know, um, get to know some uh, new topics. And even though this will be uh, the series, right? This will be a set of episodes. We'll try to make these episodes as independent of each other as possible. Meaning that, let's say, if you'd like to jump to episode number five, you don't really have to, let's say, watch episode number three. Or if you want to jump to episode number 10, if we get this far, hopefully, and you don't have to jump back, let's say, to episode number six, just to find out what's going on. Maybe it will not be always like 100% possible to be like fully independent, but we'll, I mean, I will do our, I will do my best to actually uh, try to make this episodes rather short and focus on, let's say, new topic, which is not really depending on the topic that we've covered in one of the previous episodes. So what are we going to build is the following. Within the series, we are going to, as I already mentioned, some kind of a small distributed app and the application is called FeedR. Like all the cool libraries, also .NET Word, when you want to have a cool library name, you just, you know, take some take some letter from the equation and, and then you just put some, capital, you put some capital letter at the very end and you make this nice uh, sounding, let's say, shortcut or acronym. So we are going to implement the application called FeedR and this app will be built as already mentioned, within some kind of very simple microservice architecture. And to keep things simple, I'm not even going to split the solution into multiple repositories, like for example, we already did in some of our projects that you can find on our uh, DevMentors uh, GitHub uh, public account. So just to keep things simple, okay? And I know that ideally, uh, when you think about CICD deployment, responsibilities for different teams, you, you should actually keep your microservices in se separate repositories, but for the sake of this solution and, and this overall series, we're just going to keep it separated, uh, but on the, let's say, the directory level, not on the repository level. Um, so this is uh, this is the plan, right? When it comes to the overall solution structure. So you can find, you can already find, you can already clone our feeder public repository from the GitHub. And as you can see in the description, for each episode that will be published on YouTube, there'll be 
let's say, additional branch or actually even a, even a tag that you can find within this GitHub repository. So if you want to navigate, let's say, from episode one, two, two, three, five, ten, and so on and so on, you can just jump between those tags. While on the, let's say, main master branch, there'll be always the up-to-date latest version. So that's the introduction. Now let's just clone the repo. Let's see what do we start with and then we can um, just summarize what we did and hopefully see you in the next episode. All right, as mentioned, we'll start by cloning our repository, which you can find under our dev mentor slash feeder. So there is our repository. And as you can see, just a single commit for now. And we have a very first stack episode one, which is related to our current episode being published to the YouTube channel. So we have this history and you can quickly jump back and forth between the particular episodes in code as well as on the YouTube channel. All right, so let's clone this repo. And I have cloned this already, so I can just type something like .NET build because the .NET 6.0 is the platform that we are using to run our code. So it does build. And also here you can find that we have the SLN so we can use your favorite IDE to open it. I'll be using the writer as usual. They have recently released the newest version, which has a full support for .NET 6, including MIMO APIs, all the C# 10 features, and so on. So I'm just going to stick to my favorite IDE, but you can use anything, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio for Mac, anything, any operating system that you want, whether this is Windows, Mac OS, Linux, pretty much whatever you feel most comfortable with. So, I have opened my solution and there is the there are our projects actually. All right. So we have this feeder app. So what this feeder app is all about. So the feeder is all about providing some simple data feeds. So let's try to take a look at this feeds directory. So we can think of, for example, something like news or quotes or the weather, temperature, currencies, pricing, right? So let's say you have a bunch of different feeds whether we'll try to mimic this, let's say by generating the pricing on our own, or we'll maybe try to connect some public API to get some worldwide news or to get some weather data, let's say temperatures in different countries, you can think of this as some feeds providing the data, for example, streaming the data to the end users. And then on top of it, we'll have this one additional service, which we are going to call the aggregator, which will be actually aggregating data from different feeds fits and then for example based on some specific rules this uh, aggregator service could for example publish some events maybe based on some user requirements let's say the user is interested for example when the particular currency reaches some threshold or when the temperature in some play reaches some value or maybe when there is a news from spe specific category within the place where this person does live so the aggregator would be responsible, for example, for at first aggregating the data from different feeds and then maybe based on some set of rules, let's say publishing some events. And then we have our additional, let's say supporting service, which I call the notifier. So as the name states, this service will be all about just sending some, let's say, notifications to the users of our system. Then we have the gateway. We'll talk about the gateway in one of the next episodes but this will be essentially our API gateway acting as a facade to our overall solution. So we will, from the end user consumer perspective of our, let's say public API, this is the API that the user will see, and this will be the public gateway being the only app exposed to the end user of our public API. And then we have the shared project. So the shared project, this is the place where we are going to put some of our shared code. And this will be mostly this cross-cutting concerns. So we are not going to put there any kind of, let's say, application or business logic. Although, as already mentioned, we are not really going to focus that much on a domain and clean architecture and end layers project within this solution. We'll try to keep it simple and only use abstractions when actually needed. So think of, let's say, common middleware, cross-cutting concerns, infrastructural stuff, things like message broker, logging, decorators, caching, authentication. So all these things we are going to keep here. 
And also keep in mind that since, as I already said, we are going to keep our distinct services under a single solution, this will be, for example, shared by the services. So if you take a look at our apps, you can notice that all they do is that just have the reference to this shared project. So they can reuse some of this implementation for this cross-cutting concern. So for example, we want to spin up a new microservice very fast, so we could come up with some kind of a template for our next service. So what these services are all about. Now, these are just plain ASP.NET Core empty web projects using the latest Mima API, as there is a lot of hype going on about them. So we'll see how we can make use of them in our solution. So this is just a bunch of, at least for now, single layered projects. They are all based on .NET 6.0. They are all and just the .NET SDK web apps, of course, except our shared app, which is just a class library. And if you take a look at them, let's just see, there is really nothing special. We have our get endpoint for each of these apps, just returning some kind of a hello world based on our app name. So this is what you will find for all these apps. That's the same. We have our properties with launch settings. So for each of the apps, I just set a different port. So let's say starting from our gateway, which will live under 5,000, as you can see here, I just, you know, move by adding 10 to the next app port and next app port, and next app port. And we have something like, let's say 5,010 for our aggregator, 5,020 for our notifier, finishing with the 5,050 for our weather, weather data feed application, all right? And I also set this launch browser to false. And we have our basic app settings. So here, the only thing I changed was this warning default level, and I changed this one to the information uh, level. So we can see more stuff going on within the ASP.NET Core framework internals. So now let's try to run all the apps, and I'm just going to run them for my IDE all at once by using this compound within the um, Visual Studio, you can also set up the multiple setup projects. So here I'm just going to make a compound project and I will just see if we can run all these apps at once, whether they are all working as expected. So let me run all the apps. Let me at first build this once again for the IDE now. And let's just run them. So let's see, I'll click run. And now six apps should be up and running. So as you can already imagine, this is going to be fun, trying to work around six independent applications and maybe somehow trying to, let's say, see how they incorporate with each other, talk to each other, integrate with each other, stream data between each other, or maybe later on, let's say, test each other. So our app seems to be up and running. So I should be now, for example, to actually be able to, let's say, jump, jump back into my browser and just navigate to this, let's say, one by one. So there's a gateway, there is my aggregator, there is my notifier, there is my first fit for the news, there is my second fit for the quotes, pricing, exchanges, stocks, and so on. There's my latest app being this weather fit. So I have six apps running independently from each other. And also, I will jump back now into my VS Code. Here, I'm using my favorite a REST client extension right, this one, and we've been using this extension within lots of our YouTube and um, premium courses videos as well. So you can also find here next to the SLN that we have this feeder.rest. For now, just a single file, but later on, as we move on, we might add some additional REST files per each microservice, which once again, is just a unique, distinct, independent app from each other. It's just based on directories. So we want to keep things simple under the same repository. We don't want to split this under distant repositories as we should, because that's just me working on it for this, at least for now. We wouldn't have multiple teams working on the same code in parallel, so just keep things simple for now. And here we can find this feeder rest file. And once you have this rest client installed, and once you have this .rest or .http file, you can start using it. So here I have my basic variables for the basic URLs of my services, and then I'm just calling these methods. So three pounds, three hashes, and then for example, I can do get request for my, let's say, gateway, and then get request aggregator, get notifier, 
get new suite, get clothes, and get weather fit. So that's pretty much all that we have for now. Just ensure on your side that you can clone the solution, that you can build a solution, that you can run all the services on the existing ports, that you have no ports collision and so on. And then just see if you can see this hello world messages from listing services. And if you do, then you are good to go. And in the next episodes, let's, we'll just jump to the code and we'll start adding some cool stuff into our apps. All right, so what we did in this very first episode, kind of an introduction into our feeder, is that we just discuss the solution, right? You have seen that the solution is purely written in .NET 6.0, which is the latest version of the framework. We simply talked about the tools that we are going to use, like, for example, VS Code with REST client or Docker that we'll use later on in the future for setting up our infrastructure or our services so we can run them with a single command and so on and so on. So that was the plan for this very first episode. Hopefully you are as excited as I am because I can promise you there'll be a lot of cool stuff going on within those series. Some of them will be more related to the ASP.NET Core and .NET Framework and uh, let's say .NET 6, while the other episodes will be more related to some additional tools that you can find when building some uh, cool um, distributed applications. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and then see you in the next episode.